My guest today is Michael Brown. Michael, how are you? I'm pretty good. Pretty good, David. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. I am. Uh, I just want to tell you that I really enjoyed the conference that you and your wife put on in Chicago a couple of weeks ago, the Juneteenth Conf, and I, I wanted to get you on my show and, and talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. It was exciting, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. It was fun to get out and, and see people and be in that whole conference atmosphere again, which I used to do a lot of. And, uh, the pandemic threw a monkey wrench into that. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Uh, tell me what 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 is Juneteenth Conf, and what inspired you to do it? Okay, so uh, it's it's interesting. So uh, basically, uh, you know, we started in 2020, um, in the when the pandemic first started, and uh, it was an interesting uh, confluence of of event. So uh, I joined Microsoft the prior year. Uh, on June 3rd, I believe. And uh, I was in the midst of like, you know, celebrating my anniversary, locked in home. And uh, I was just thinking, you know, like I was reflecting on what can I do as, you know, like as a next step, I'm always thinking about impact and, and you know, making, making my presence felt wherever I go. <laughs> and so, um, it just so happened there was a, I was watching another blackish um with uh with Anthony Anderson and uh that episode was about Juneteenth, you know, and uh I was like, Oh wow, that is coming up. And I never like we live we I grew up in Chicago, so I never really heard about it growing up. Um it wasn't until I'm until I moved to Houston, where you know Juneteenth is a big, big deal. Oh, talk uh, about what is about Ju- Juneteenth for? So I, I'm with you. Like most Americans, I didn't hear about it until a few years ago when people started yeah talking about making it a holiday. What is oh, it? Okay, yes. Yeah, so, so basically, um, the the or 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 origin of uh, Juneteenth was that uh, on June 19th, 1865, uh, uh, a uh, general from the uh union army came to galvinson test texas and made a declaration to all of the uh currently enslaved people uh in texas that they were free because of the emancipation proclamation and you know so forth and so on and so this was actually two years after <laughs> after that proclamation so like um you know the deep south they they didn't hear about it until yeah, the, until the slave a owners later. heard about it they just made a conscious choice <laughs> not to tell the slaves that right <laughs> exactly and um and so um uh, you know what i reckon so a year later um was when the actual first juneteenth um celebration was and basically it was a recognition of 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 our freedom and then it was also you know there were several things everyone knew like this wasn't like the end of the journey the end of the the process toward liberty and justice you know for all um but they reckon they recognized that you know like there was something to celebrate right there was a milestone here and like like i said for me um you know there was a there was a celebration to be had. There was a milestone for me, you know, in, in that you know my first year at Microsoft. And then, but also you have to recognize that what was going on in that environment, not just the pandemic, but you know the um, the events around George Floyd, and you know, like a, it was a culmination of several other you know incidents over the past decade over the past number of decades actually um and you know it felt it felt felt kind of hard for me to like you know like truly celebrate in the midst of that environment but you know reflecting on Juneteenth it's like you know there was still a struggle to be done there was still work to be done but um you know I think taking a moment to to reflect and and celebrate and uh, and prepare yourself for the journey ahead 
what was a noble cause. So I kind of took it as, you know, multiple themes coming together for me. Um, and and so I, I went ahead with, uh, with a set, you know, it'd be a great time to, um, you know, recognize Juneteenth and celebrate what we've done, what Black people have done in the industry. You know, like, um, we, you know, there's still more to come. There's there's more work to be done, but we've come so far in in making our presence felt and and showing that you know, like, it's not an aberration. We we actually belong here. We're actually here and and succeeding and thriving. You know, despite you know some incumbent obstacles. And that, that's what the conference was all about to like celebrate, hey, you know, while all, all these other tech conferences, you know, might have one or two black speakers in there and like, you know, they're they're according off into like usually talking about just DEI. We had we had a roster of of all black speakers and they were talking on deep technical topics, you know, from everything from AI, UX and UI design, uh, IP law, you know, it was a very um, technical demonstration, not just not just soft skills. Yeah, it was definitely. A, a, it was a tech conference and it was for technologists, but it wasn't just tech talks. We also saw some talks right. that were decidedly uh, non technical. Career. Oh yeah, uh, there's one on career uh, management and one on. Uh, oh gosh, I, I have the program uh, in front of me. There was a, a great keynote by Tim Banks on just uh, recognizing who you are and uh, t taking that. There was a a chat with author Binda Hartz about her struggles getting recognition in uh, an essentially all white workforce. So. It was for technologists, but it wasn't necessarily not everything was about technology. Right, you're. I, I love how Tim put it. He said, um, "He said this is a, a a tech conference." Well, no, he said this isn't just a tech conference. This is for Black people and technology. And so, right. and you know, like it sounds like it's the same, but you know, it's a key difference. You know, it's focused on how do we how do we how do we arrive? How do we show up? How do we, how do we thrive in in, in the industry? Yeah, uh, and I was uh, the I was the minority in this conference. I was not the target audience. I, I noticed that not only were one hundred percent of the speakers were black, but probably ninety percent of the audience as well. Uh, but I still yeah. I got something out of it, and I never at any point felt excluded or that the I, the message still resonated with me. I just I'm not. Uh, can you talk a little about what what your goals were? What 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 did you want people to come away with after attending this? Yeah, so like I've always said that, that you know, my my main point was to change the narrative. You know, we always hear like, oh, you know, we look for black speakers, we look for black professionals in technology, but the you know the pipeline isn't there, and it's like you know we're here, and and you know. It's, you know, um, it's funny because, you know, recently the, the Supreme Court made their ruling on affirmative action and people conflate affirmative action with some kind of lowering of a standard. You know, it's like, I think, um, you know, like I went to um, an elite uh, um, liberal arts college um, in Massachusetts and I didn't get any like lower standard, you know, like I, I, I excelled in school so that because I felt that was my my way out of my situation in my life. You know, I came from a lower income house, a single a single uh, parent family. And, you know, like in Chicago, in the height of the drug wars, you know, like basically I could have easily been a stati another statistic. And, uh, you know, like uh, I, I saw, you know, my brains and <laughs> and and my uh my work ethic in, in academics as my way out so it wasn't a matter of like oh well we're going to you know like he doesn't have that great of an sat score he doesn't have that great of a gpa we're going to let him in anyway you know i had 
I was 98 percentile on all of my standardized tests. I had I was like third in my class, so it's it was um, there was no uh, lowering of a standard there. And you know, like I think that message that misinformation has been deliver deliberately done, and so I think that's what that's that's what my goal in Juneteenth conference is to is to demonstrate and and celebrate. You know that you know there are people who are, despite all of the uh, all of the stereotypes and all of the um, assumptions made about you know a black person in in a tech role, that no, it's not true. We're ex we do excellent work. We we probably push ourselves harder to rise above th those stereotypes and misconceptions. So. Um, I think I think that was demonstrated well at the conference. Uh, as soon as you started talking about your education, I I opened up your LinkedIn profile. I see you went to Williams College. I am very yes. familiar with Williams College. My son was a basketball coach there for two years, and uh, I'm aware that it is a it is a tough school to get into. It's a tough school to hack. It's uh, had a big challenge finding people that could actually get admitted to the school and could play basketball. <laughs> so one of his big challenges there. Um, you, 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 what what advice can you give to conference organizers who are trying to attract a more diverse set of speakers? I've heard this before. This I think you 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 mentioned it, but the the lament is, well, gosh, we want to get more minorities, we want to get more women, we want more black people. They're just not applying. They're just not, you know, our, our call for speakers, you know, doesn't include them. What am I supposed to do? That's sort of the the. The, the lament I hear. What 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 what's your advice to them? I mean, I think you know people talk about diversity and inclusion, and, and don't realize is that diversity is a metric. It it it's, it's a you know like when you say I want to lose weight, that's a metric. It's not necessarily the end goal or 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 the end all be all. You you lose weight as a result of a healthier lifestyle. Um, so you become healthier and then eventually like the the weight comes off or or even better, you know, your clothes fit better or um and so diversity is is a trailing indicator of a welcome inclusion, you know, like you know, making the effort to be inclusive. Um, I think and I think that's uh that's that's the that's the magic <laughs> that's the magic formula is that being inclusive leads to more diversity you know like if you want and i think you know a, a few recruiters and uh hiring managers have asked me internally you know like how do i get more black people to apply to my roles you know how do i how do i be make a more diverse team. I want to be intentionally diverse. And I'm like, the thing is, is you have to be inclusive. It's you have to be welcoming to 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 uh, the people you want to attract. And, you know, just like, you know, when recruiters in general say, I want I want to attract more high quality tech people, what do they do? They go to they go to the meetups where, you know, tech people are you know they uh get on into the community forum and message boards and things like that and i think that's that's the same thing for if you want a certain category or a certain class of people to 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 know about you to be involved with you you have to walk in their spaces okay so the problem is more upstream it's uh uh, they 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 need to be a little more introspective. You know, what am I doing that isn't inclusive, or what could I be doing more of that would be more inclusive, and to connect with those. Connections. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Then, you can't just say that they. You know, the week before your conference, ooh, we need more black speakers. How do I get them? You know, that's not. I, going I, I have seen that happen before. You know, a quick call to my 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 one black friend, my one woman friend, whatever. <laughs> that's hey. <laughs> What are you doing next Saturday? Uh, and uh, right. and that doesn't really fly too well. It's a it's it seems disingenuous. Right. Um, let's talk about the the format. I know that you did this for what three years uh, virtually, and just this was the right. first year you decided to do it in person. What what inspired you to change yeah. the format? 
Well, I, I've always had an eye for doing it in person. You know, like we, we started during the pandemic, but I also wanted to be safe. So like 2020 was when we first started. Of course, like it had to be virtual because everyone's locked in their home. Uh, it actually gave me gave us an advantage because it was easier to organize um, and and gather virtually than to like say hey everyone let's let's come down to Chicago, <laughs> um, and so you know the following year and the year after that I, I was just being conscious of like yes you know the restrictions have been lifted but I did when I want to like be a spreader event basically, um, and I felt I felt this year you know like um, it was. You know, it's still there, but, you know, like people have have learned to take precautions. A lot of people are are, um, vaccinated. So I felt like it was it was safe ish (laughs) to gather together. And um, and uh, and, you know, like I was excited to uh, to just be in person because, like you said, you know, like uh, the conferencing, you know, is a is a major event in, for in te- for technology in, in terms of networking, in terms of getting together. And, and you know, like I love the hallway conversations and, and the little gatherings that happen between sessions as much as the sessions themselves. Yeah, and you also, you maintained the, the virtual presence. There was actually a hybrid conference. Some people did connect yep. online. Um, what's, uh, what's the future? Are, are, I saw that you, I can't remember where I saw this, but you've actually announced dates for next year, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, I, I, you know, I, I want to make sure it's on the weekend, and um, uh, le- this year we we landed right before Father's Day, so I'm, I saw that Father's Day is the weekend before Juneteenth, so we we pushed it to the weekend after Juneteenth because Juneteenth is on. Um, on Wednesday next year, so we'll okay. be we'll be celebrating the conference on on that Friday, the eighteenth, I believe it is, the eighteenth or nineteenth. Not put it in the show notes. Ooh, no, it's not going to be the nineteenth, but yeah, it's it's going to be the the Friday after Juneteenth this year. I'll open my calendar now. Uh, Six nineteen twenty four is a Wednesday, so the following mm-hmm. Friday would be the twenty first. Yes. All right. Uh, and this will be will this be in person and will you be back in Chicago? It will be in person. We you know, like I love Chicago. That's my hometown, like I said. And uh I th- I, th- I think um uh, yeah, let's 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 go back to Chicago for this year. Good answer. <laughs> I was that's the answer I was hoping for. Uh call me up and I'll see about uh, reserving that same space again. Okay. Uh, it takes uh, it takes time and effort to put this on, but it also takes some some money. Uh, where did the money come from? Uh, so the the first year we it was all volunteer terror based and uh, and actually you know like uh, some of the attendee people attending and other 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 contributors uh, donated, and it gave us a little bit of funds to uh, to go bigger and bolder, you know, in the subsequent years. Um, and this year again, you know, like, uh, it was all donation based, uh, part, part of, part of our, uh, funding comes from, you know, Microsoft has a very generous, uh, corporate matching program where it's not just dollars. It's also, uh, 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 time base. So, um, because, because my own hours working on the on the conference and the organization plus uh plus anyone else internally who's involved in it uh can donate can make make a match based on their time contributed to it um that's that's where a big big amount of our funds come from also we we did have people who donated um you know as attendees and as uh as other uh other partners and hopefully uh you know now that we've like more or less established a present and uh um next year we'll we'll be able to get some corporate sponsors i've actually been approached by a few people so um hopefully they'll 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 expand expand out as well 
And you use some of that money not just for the conference itself, but you have some other initiatives, right? Yeah. So we're, you know, like the first thing I did was actually establish a nonprofit. Um, what what we are is we're currently uh, uh, incorporated as a nonprofit in Washington, um, and we have what's called a fiscal host, and basically that's that's an official five hundred one c three who uh, manages the uh, finances and make sure that all of the tax work is in order so that uh, so that any donations are uh, are officially recognized as charitable charitable com- contributions. And what we want to do with with um, as we grow larger is to uh, provide provide ways to address some of the issues in terms of the technology gap. So uh, the, our major program right now that we're building is a uh, a uh, paid internship for high school students, where you know we'll help help teach them to um, to learn about uh, technology careers. You know, starting the course with the obvious programming, but I want to expand it to things like UX design, project management, so that they could see that there's a full gamut gamut of uh, of career paths within technology you know most people just hear technology and think oh it's for math nerds or or whatever but you know there's so much involved in bringing software to life that um there's a space for everyone yeah uh totally agree i'm actually surprised by how little math is involved in my job these days (laughs) yeah uh, excellent. Well, Michael, thank you so much for your time. I, I really enjoyed attending your conference, and I'm really looking forward to next year. Yeah, me too. Me too. And thanks, thanks for coming out, and thanks for your enthusiasm around the conference. And um, I'm looking forward to bigger things to come. Yes. <laughs>